anyone you know has gotten a puppy lately, changes that uh, have been made to pet rescues are on the way. Yeah, the Fox 9 investigators are here with a story all animal lovers should see. Jeff and Kelsey, when it comes to buying a dog or a cat these days, pet stores are pretty much part of the past. Many cities ban them to combat puppy mills. Filling the demand are animal rescues, and most do great and important work. But there are some 500 animal rescues in Minnesota and no specific state law to regulate them, something an animal lover may not realize until it's too late. <coughs> to look at them in cages, wanting love, needing a home, is to better understand our own humanity. I saw her and instant attraction. But what happens when promises are broken? You know, we have had some complaints and some concerns about you selling sick dogs. Okay. Can you help me out with that? Um. Well, where do you turn when a rescue turns to heartache? It's like, I feel like I'm rescuing the dog from the rescue. I saw popcorn in the kennel and asked to hold him, and you know, he was adorable. And... For Ali Cordelizzi, it was puppy love at first sight, an 11 week old Pomeranian named Popcorn. She got him for $300 the day before Thanksgiving at an adoption event put on by Canine Rescue and Rehoming. Okay, what's your name? My name is Mandy. Oh, Mandy. An animal rescue run by this woman, Mandy Duchesne. By Thanksgiving morning, Popcorn was very sick. He didn't eat. He was only drinking water. He would throw it up every time he would drink the water. And she made an emergency trip to the veterinarian. She like started the parvo test immediately. And then at that point, it was just too late. Just 14 hours after he was adopted, Popcorn died from parvo, a highly contagious virus that spreads among puppies and unvaccinated dogs. Yeah. Unknown to Allie, she had adopted a dying puppy. Um, I assume you contacted the rescue after this happened. I actually called her while I was still at the vet clinic because I knew how contagious Parvo was and how many other puppies had been at the adoption event. Hi, Mandy. Hi. How are you? We went to talk to Mandy Duchesne before one of her adoption events. So people are concerned about kind of the, the health and safety of these animals. Okay. I, 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 I don't really have any comment. I mean, we, if we get complaints, we address them with the adopters. Um, but I don't, I don't know, you know. The Fox 9 investigators discovered two other dog owners who accused Duchesne of animal abuse last November, telling the Wright County Sheriff the dogs they adopted were underweight, unhealthy, and that Duchesne had misrepresented the health of one of the dogs. A deputy inspected Duchesne's home in Cocado and found several healthy animals. No further action was taken. Duchesne told the deputy most of the dogs she rescues are actually kept with foster families. The difficulty of this is it's all unregulated. You know, it's all, all these rescues are unregulated unre and people who want a healthy dog are basically taking it on faith a lot of times. Right. We provide medical records for all of our dogs. All of our dogs have seen when everybody was adopted, they have all gotten a clean bill of health. After four attempts of trying to get vaccination records, I've still received nothing and she won't respond to me. Corrine Spiegel is currently fostering a dog for Duchesne, a great Pyrenees named Betty. So they met me in a parking lot, handed me the dog, and that was it. Yeah, we love her. But she wonders if the dog had ever seen a vet because Betty held a few surprises. After I had her for three weeks, the dog goes in to the vet to get spayed and oops, finds out she's pregnant. Duchesne told us Spiegel didn't need veterinarian records because she was only fostering the dog, not adopting it. And Duchesne told us she's pursuing legal action against Spiegel to get the pregnant dog back. But it seems like most of these rescues, they start out with the best of intentions. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, the, the reason they're in the industry is they want to save the lives of animals. Keith Streff is an investigator for the Animal Humane Society. He says there are some 500 animal rescues in Minnesota. And generally, while many are good, there's no regulation or oversight. It's just that at some point in time, um, 
the money and the profit on the on the uh, dog sales starts to creep in, and they start uh, they start sacrificing environmental conditions for profit margin, and then things go downhill from there. They hide behind the guys that they're a rescue. They can't be doing anything wrong. The rogues gallery of bad rescues includes Elizabeth Osterbauer, who ran close to home rescue. She was convicted of stealing and killing a dog by stomping on it and drowning it. On a farm she rented in New Prague, police found 60 dogs, many thin and shaking in an unheated barn. There's Bethany Bilby, who ran Love Me Again Rescue. Inside a Bloomington business park, investigators found a horrific scene. 37 dogs in tiny kennels, covered in feces and urine, many without food or water. Bilby pled guilty to mistreating animals. She got probation. When we stopped by her Owatonna home, it was clear we were not welcomed. No. Okay, we're off. As you could probably hear, he didn't tell us whether Bethany Bilby was home or whether she's even running a shelter. But we could hear the sounds of dogs barking, not only coming from the home, but also some of these sheds right next to it. Whether she's still in business isn't clear. You know, as a nonprofit, you have a service, you're doing a service to the public, and there shouldn't be any reason that you need to be hiding anything. So this is our transport room. Rough Start Rescue is considered by many in the field to be the gold standard in Minnesota. Visitors are invited to their offices in Princeton, where they have on-site veterinarians. It's a nonprofit with a board of directors holding them accountable. The public is the one funding, you know, a nonprofit or grants or corporations. Um, so they want to know, you know, what are you doing with your money? Does that mean you're a nonprofit? Yes. Oh, you are? Yep. Okay. So every dollar that goes into adoption goes back to the yep. dog? Yeah, so we're all volunteers. None of us are paid. We're all, oh, really? so everything is, goes right back into the dogs. On its website and brochures, Canine Rescue and Rehoming says it's a 501c3 nonprofit. But we checked with the IRS and discovered the group's nonprofit status was revoked two years ago. Why was that revoked? I, you'd have to talk to them about that. Well, I, I don't have a comment about, on that. You don't have a comment about why your 501c3 no, was I revoked? I, I, I'm, I'm cold and I have things to do. Should someone buying a puppy be concerned if an organization has had their 501c3 yanked? I would look at why that happened. If, if, if 501c3 has status has been taken away, I would certainly ask questions about that. Janelle Dixon is the director of the Animal Humane Society. She says when choosing a member of the family, there's no such thing as too many questions. What are your placement rates? Where do you get your animals from? What are your protocols for caring for them if they need veterinary care? In fact, the Animal Humane Society stopped working with canine rescue and rehoming seven years ago after receiving complaints. I mean, I know in 2011, the Golden Valley Humane Society decided they want, didn't want to deal with you anymore because of the conditions. That, yeah. Okay. That's been resolved. I, I, the, well, literally, the, the they right still won't deal share, with you, though. I, the, Golden Valley. I don't want to deal with the, right, this, the Humane Society. Looking at them in cages, the impulse is to rescue them all. You just got a puppy, right? Yes, we got a puppy two days ago. This is Louie. Eventually, Allie got her money back and got another puppy, Louie, this time from a breeder. She still believes in rescues, but she'd be the first to tell you, heartache is never a bargain. Nonprofit organizations need to file annual tax returns with the IRS. They're called a 990. It gives an overview of how much money a nonprofit is collecting and what they're spending it on. We can't find one on record for canine rescue and rehoming. Mandy Duchesne tells us she would provide a previous filing, but we're still waiting. We know many of you will want to know some of the red flags to look for when adopting from a rescue, so we have some tips for you over at the Fox 9 app. For the Fox 9 Investigators, I'm Tom Lydon.